Hi, uh, today we're going to take a look at proportion and um, then build that into the whole structure of the body. Now, if we look at proportion, um, that is organization of elements according to their relative size and length, which means we're going to use a part of the body to, to measure the other part of the body. Now, in a figure, a whole body weight height can be measured using the head as a unit of measurement. And in this instance, we're going to look at the use of a uh, look at an idealized male body, which is eight head size. I say idealized because um, we can think about it. Uh, what the differences between male and female, and uh, <coughs> children, and so on. So we need to uh, just remember that it's it's an idealized thing, and we've got to really look at those proportions. Uh, when we're actually looking at a figure or a photograph of a figure just to help us gauge where things are. Again, this is a standing figure, which makes it um, not quite so realistic. So if we take the head uh, as a unit, the second position is around the armpit and the nipple. The third position would be around the navel, and the fourth is to the groin area. Now the fifth, sixth, and seventh, and eighth are the legs, so the sixth position is the knee, and the eighth is the bottom of the foot. Notice that the legs are over half the length of the body and the hips nearly come up to the navel. So we've just got to be careful of that. Like I said before, we've just got to be considerate of this is a standing figure, um, male and uh, male and female are obviously different as our children. Um, so we're just going to quickly move on to looking at the width of the body. And to establish the width of the body, it's about two and a half to three heads wide. The neck and shoulders are about a third of the way into the second position and the upper arm is level with the navel at the third and the forearm to the wrists at the fourth and the hand goes two and a th about two thirds into the fifth position about um, halfway down the thigh. So we just bear those things in mind and we're going to just have a quick uh, recap of that doing the drawing as we go along. So here we are, I've just got a grid drawn out and we'll put the first part of the head in then we'll see where the fourth part is, put the groin in so we get some length there and obviously the, to the uh, bottom and we quickly uh, can build up our um, shapes bearing in mind each of the positions of the uh, main joints, the, the elbow shape, where the wrist is, where the knees are um, and just um, making sure that we've got a good width to the body. So just to recap, we've got eight heads for the height of the body and then um, from the arm to the forearm and the, the size of the hand. So now we're going to follow on from an earlier episode, uh, Drawing Made Easy, uh, which was of drawing the torso. And we never got actually on to putting the arms and legs on. But now we know a bit more about proportion. We're going to be able to um, draw the cylinders that make up the arms and the legs and attach them to the torso that we looked at in episode 8. If you didn't see that then I suggest you just go back and have a quick look and if you're not so confident with the other shapes then there's earlier episodes which will uh, help you get confident in your drawing of ellipses and shapes and, and quite free-flowing uh, drawing. So here we have a few clips that are just reminded us of how to create the structure of the torso in three dimensions using um, the rib cage, the abdomen and the pelvic area and then laying skin over it and what we want to be able to do is to attach our arms and legs and so they take the form of these tapering cylinders and so just a little bit of a practice using ellipses and constructing cylinders and cone shapes um, and then they turn so you make a turn and then curve understanding a little bit about the center line to the um, to the lower part of the limb. Uh, generally it goes from thicker to thinner so that's why we're doing this and then we're going to look at how we attach all those to the torso in the next clip. So just practice those as you're going along.
So now we're going to look at how we can attach the limbs to the uh, rest of the body. So uh, we're just going to mark out where the torso is on this um, underlying skeleton structure. So we can just actually be clearly see what I'm talking about. So I've just marked in where the ball of the armpit is and um, the ball of the socket of the joint as well. Just marking where the torso and the, and the abdomen and the pelvis go uh, just loosely. Just so this is just so we can see it so what we've got is the ball of the joint and then the socket in which into which the arm is going as a drawn as ellipse we draw a ellipse at the elbow and then there's another one as the bone goes down what we're looking at is how does the flesh go around that bone it's sort of in a perpendicular way and then we can make a um a line which is um, the forearm and um, that's slightly curved in the opposite direction if you notice that and then we can uh, make those cylinders uh, join up and then we've got another line which will uh, show where the wrist is and again it's in a slightly it's curved in the opposite direction I'll come on to the reason for that in a minute but um, it's sort of like one curve one way one curve the other way one curve back and we've got the fleshed out look of that arm and now we come to the, th the thigh and again it's the same on the pelvis we're going to draw the socket and then where does the outside um, joint of that hip go and uh, we can just see that um, rotator just there so we draw the ball of the hip and then the socket this is just to see what it looks like and then we can see the curve of that top uh, femur just curves in towards the knee and so the whole flesh goes around those joints uh, around that uh, bone and so that's how to uh, begin seeing how the uh, limbs are going to join together next part is actually looking at how we draw the whole construct the whole figure and so again starting with the abdomen um, this is and the pelvis pelvic region and the torso um the upper the rib cage and um, we're just going to draw that in and uh, as i'm marking that away think about how the other these other ellipses are going to join into the whole figure so we've got that arm uh, socket area just pop the head in uh, loosely we've got the arm socket area and the ball of where that aim is and we're looking at that bone which is going to about the size, the same place as the navel. And you can see I've just drawn in, to start with, I've just drawn in the flesh because I can just draw that curve without actually having to draw in the bone. I'm doing a similar sort of thing here. I can draw in the curve and the little ellipse for the wrist and make sure they're curving in opposite directions. And then the hand curves in like that. Do the same at the other side. Ellipse, just remembering where the, the, the arm uh, bone is, the, that upper arm and then where the elbow is and then put a slightly bigger ellipse to start off the elbow for the forearm and curve it slightly in the opposite direction i want my volumes so that's showing me um, quite a lot of what i need to know coming on to the um, the hip joint you can see that bone is going to push out you can always feel it it's going to push out and then turn in so that uh, that's the reason why we've got this um, fleshiness moving inwards from the outer of the hip towards the knee which is uh, in this case it's because um, it's a standing figure it's just sort of slightly bowed inwards and then the calf uh, bones we're just going to curve those in that other direction just following the shape of the bone and that with the top ellipse slightly bigger than the knee joint uh, at the bottom it's just so it helps us flesh it out so when I come on to fleshing it out in a second we can see how that works so that's basically it um, and we're just now going to uh, flesh out that uh, figure a little bit more because obviously we don't want it to look like a robot we're just going to pull it down and look around the shape of the knee um, the muscles of the calf uh, it's going to be more uh, prominent and uh, again that curve from the uh, top of the thigh at the hip area curving inwards and the reason we do that is because that adds also when we're doing our drawings it adds dynamic we always this static figure actually has a, just a little bit of dynamism to it and uh, because the way the, the bones shift and turn 
and we can do the same thing just pop that hand the hands are turned inwards at the moment um, obviously they're not always going to be and this is crucial to know that this is just for so we can practice it and practice it and get it in our heads I suggest you practice quite a lot just doing this getting the proportions right um, just a standing figure you could try it in different ways I'll do it uh, later on I'll just do a, um, a further one the head's a little bit standing up uh, there so I need to bring in some muscles from the neck to the shoulders um, so that we can it will give it a little bit more stature and it'll make give those muscles that need to come down towards the shoulders are going to help us stand the head and give it more support and um, so now what I'm looking at is just that just to reiterate I'm looking at this dynamic curve that the bones actually give it and the arms actually follow and when we get that when we do when we think about that in our movement in um, of the figures in future times we can see we can get much more dynamic movement of the shapes rather than it being just as this here just probably straight down the arms of the movement are going to give us some turn on that figure and uh, practice that a number of times and you'll um, begin to understand it a lot more so thanks for listening and I uh, hope you've gained something from that and hope you subscribe to my channel and uh, like the video and see you again in Hello Art. This is John Sutcliffe from johnsutcliffeart.com. Take care.